everybody. I am excited for this episode of First Time Flocks, even though it is our last episode, but I hope you've all been enjoying the series uh, hosted by Blue Seal and by me, Lisa Steele from Fresh Eggs Daily. Um, I've had a really fun time doing the series and answering some of the most common questions that I get all the time from all of you. So today we are going to be talking about how to keep your chicken coop clean. Um, it's a question I get asked all the time. As you can see, my chicken coop is white. For those of you who don't follow me on uh, Facebook or Instagram, you might not know, but a couple of years ago, I actually shiplapped to the inside of my chicken coop and uh, then sort of immediately regretted the decision because I was like, how the heck am I going to keep this clean? Um, but it turns out it's not nearly as hard as I thought it was going to be. It really brightened the coop up. I uh, created a double wall, so sort of an insulation of sorts to keep our coop warmer, which has indeed helped to keep our coop warmer without actual insulation. Um, but I do have a few tricks to help you keep your chicken coop clean without spending a lot of time and money. I don't clean my coop all that often. Who has the time or wants to be cleaning a chicken coop all the time? So when I hear that some of you clean your coop every day or even every week, um, you definitely do not have to do that. But there are a couple of tricks. So hopefully the chickens will behave a little better than they did last week because last week they were pretty loud, but I shut their little door and I shut the big coop door. So hopefully we won't get bothered. So, um, so to keep your chicken coop clean. First of all, um, what it really comes down to is making sure that your chickens are not spending any more time in the coop than is necessary. So your chickens really should only be in the coop to sleep and lay eggs, period. We live in Maine. My chickens are outside pretty much all day, every day, year round. Um, when it's super windy or sleeting or, you know, like in the single digits, sometimes they will come into the coop to warm up a little bit. For the most part, though, they should be outside all day, every day, sunrise to sunset. So that little door opens in the morning, shuts at night, and uh, they come in to lay their eggs, they leave. They sleep in the coop at night. That cuts down so much on the poop and the mess and all that. Um, I do wrap my run in tarps in the winter to keep out the wind. They have a covered area. I put shade cloth up in the summer. Um, but you definitely want to encourage them to spend as much time outside in the run as possible. Uh, my second tip for a clean coop is no feed or water inside the coop ever. I never make an exception to that. Uh, my chickens eat outside every day year round. Again, we live in Maine. It's cold. They come out to eat. They come back inside sometimes. Um, but covering a portion of your run, the part that's attached to your coop, even if it's just with a tarp or a piece of plywood. We had a piece of plywood for years. This last year, I actually had someone come and make a nice pitched roof with shingles, but we had a piece of plywood for five years and it worked. So it's a nice covered area. Your food and water stays outside. They can have a dust bath area. Um, food and water inside the coop is just going to make a huge mess, whether or not you have ducks. If you have ducks, it absolutely will. But it just attracts flies and rodents and there's spills and mold and it's just messy. So no food and water inside, chickens outside as much as possible. Um, it's really important to keep a clean coop because your chickens are going to be healthier. Your eggs are going to be cleaner. Uh, the number one tip for keeping your eggs clean is to make sure that your roosts are higher than your nesting boxes. It's kind of hard to see at this angle because I have the camera sideways and down, but my top roosts are absolutely, they're probably two feet higher than my nesting boxes. And even this um, middle roost is higher than the nesting boxes. So you're encouraging your chickens to roost on the nesting bars instead of in the boxes. They should absolutely not be sleeping in the boxes. If they get into that bad habit, you can always cut a piece of chicken wire, put nails, and just stretch it across the boxes in the late afternoon so no one sleeps in them. Um, if chickens are sleeping in the boxes, they're pooping in the boxes, it's just one more thing to clean. I use um, Aspen nesting pads in my uh, boxes. They have like a paper backing and then they're, well, I can show you. Um, I'll show you what the bedding looks like. So it kind of looks like this. Um, it holds together really well. Um, it's not dusty at all. I put these things in and I kind of fluff them up every couple days. I take them out and shake them out every once in a while. But for the most part, they stay in for months. Um, your nesting boxes should not get dirty. During mud season, things do get a little dirtier. The chickens are coming in with mud on their feet. Um, so I do sometimes get dirty eggs and have to change the 
the uh, nesting pads. But other than that, so your, if your boxes are clean, you're almost assured clean eggs. And of course a goose comes by. Okay, so that's about the nesting boxes and the roosts. Um, on the floor of my coop, I have used straw for years. Um, it keeps the chickens warm, the ducks sleep on it, it keeps them warm. It's really great for insulating. Uh, it's fairly inexpensive, not dusty. Um, shavings are super dusty. I tried them, hated them, way too much dust. Anyone who has brooded baby chicks in their house um, knows how dusty shavings are because after you've had your baby chicks in the house and you move them out, you're finding dust in every nook and cranny for months. Um, so I don't use shavings. I am trying hemp. Um, this is brand new for me. So I'm trying hemp bedding from Eaton Hemp. Um, it sort of looks like chopped straw. Oh, and by the way, you don't want the chopped straw like that they sell at the big box stores and the plastic bags. If you use straw, you want baled straw. Real bale straw. The chopped straw is also super dusty and I actually got some moldy bags because I tried that too. So you want the real straw in the bales. But I'm trying this hemp. Um, it's super dry. It's really nice. It looks like chopped straw. It's super light. I put it down about two weeks ago and I do really like it for the summer. I probably will go back to the straw in the winter just because we do have the ducks and they sleep on the floor and it's a much better insulator. Um, but any of you who are thinking of switching from shavings, try out the hemp. Um, it's it's absorbent, I guess, or I don't know if that's really the word, but um, there is some poop mixed in with it, but it's not, um, it actually doesn't smell at all. And I haven't cleaned in like two weeks. Easy. Um, so what I do is I have a rake, my famous pink rake that everybody loves that I got at Abishan Hardware here in Maine. Um, with the rake, every morning after I let the chickens out, I just take the rake and I sort of, um, rake the spot under the roosts because that's where the chickens are sleeping that's where 99 percent of the poop is so i just kind of rake it the poop falls to the bottom where it sits and disintegrates and dries up and you don't actually have to like remove anything um and i keep doing that you know shuffling the shavings around or the um straw around or now the hemp and you know after a couple weeks month and a half, two months, I finally rake the straw out into the run. I'll be raking the hemp out into the run. I don't know if you can see. No, it doesn't go down enough. Um, I've got about a two or three inch layer of hemp on the, the floor of the coop right now, but I do really like it. Um, but there is absolutely no need to pick out pieces of, of poop out of the um, out of the coop. It honestly just dries up and disintegrates. Uh, some of you might heard of the deep litter method, which is an old timers method that works really great, especially in cold climates where you basically are composting inside your coop. So all winter, you never remove anything. You put in your um, base layer of straw or I guess hemp now I might try. And then you tar turn it every day. The chickens, of course, help turn it because they go through it. And then you just keep adding more. Um, as it gets packed down, you can use dried leaves, you can use pine needles. Um, and by the end of the winter, You've got a nice thick layer, which is great, you know, for warmth. And it also has started composting. So it's creating its own warmth. It's creating its own beneficial microbes. And it's actually a super healthy way as well as easier in the winter because you're not, you know, dragging um, wheelbarrows full of dirty litter out. Then in the spring, you take it out, you put it in your compost pile. Um, usually in the fall, I do a really good coop cleaning because I love to take all that straw with the, the chicken manure and the feathers and I use it to mulch my rhubarb bed, my garlic bed, um, whatever needs to be mulched. So that sits there till spring. Um, but I, I am loving the hemp because it's not dusty, but the, the key to take out of that is shavings are super dusty. And if you use shavings in your coop, you probably are going to be at least dusting all the time. Um, I do keep a feather duster in my coop and you want to clean from the bottom down. So like up by the rafters and stuff, I get cobwebs. So you know, whenever I kind of notice them, I'll just grab the feather duster, um, sweep them away. Not a big deal. Doesn't take a lot of time. And I also have a stiff brush that was actually my grandfather's. Um, when my grandmother died, I found this in their barn and I took it. Um, but I'll use it, you know, on the walls or whatever, because you will get cobwebs and things. I mean, it is a chicken coop after all. So those two things I do as needed. Um, and again, top down. So you're kind of getting everything down, you know, so it's lower to floor level. Um, I do keep a, uh, old paint scraper or putty knife or whatever this is 
in the coop with a little pail and if needed, I go and I just scrape any poop off the roosts in the morning because again, this is where the chickens are sleeping. So that's where your poop is going to be. It's going to be on the roosts or on the ground under the roosts. So I'll just scrape it off into my bucket, throw in the compost pile. Um, behind the, the roosts, I don't know if you can see, but I have um, contact paper. So it's basically, you know, just contact paper you'd use in a drawer. Um, I put it up, I do staple it up so it stays because it doesn't necessarily stick very well. But that area behind the roosts is where the poop is going to land on the wall. So this way it's super easy just to sponge it off or use a wet rag to wipe off the area behind the roosts. My roosts do unhook and come out so I can hose them down if I need to. Usually in the spring, I haven't done it yet, but usually in the spring I will take everything out of the coop, hose everything down that can be hosed down, you know, scrub the whole entire inside of the coop. Um, sometimes I repaint, you know, I'll repaint the roosts, nesting boxes, whatever needs to be done, but that's only once a year. I do make this um, orange peel coop cleaner, which those of you who follow me probably already know about, but I just take vinegar in a mason jar. I take white vinegar, orange peels, cinnamon sticks, and vanilla beans, and I shake it up and I let it sit for a couple weeks. It becomes this beautiful color. The vinegar smells go, goes away and this stuff it smells so good. Of course, I haven't used this spray bottle yet. It smells really good. So it's a nice non-toxic cleaner. The citrus oils are a degreaser. Um, you can dilute it with water if you want to scrub down the walls of your coop, if you want to scrub down the roosts or nesting boxes. Um, but I just use it as a interim cleaner for any spots that need to be cleaned. When I do clean out the um, bedding, I mean, maybe, I don't know, maybe every other month, I rake out all of the bedding, whether it's straw or now it's going to be hemp, right down to the floor. I use a flat shovel to scrape all the debris out, everything out, and I either use it in the compost, in the garden, in the run, depending on the time of year. Um, and that's all I do. I don't actually clean the floor. I just kind of scrape everything out. And then I do sprinkle diatomaceous earth, or I actually now use Coop Recuperate, which is, um, it's actually a more granular it's diatomaceous earth, but it's granular and it has essential oils in it, which smells so good and it helps with the bugs. So I'll sprinkle this on the floor. I also sprinkle this periodically on the bedding in the nesting boxes, kind of as an interim thing. Anytime, you know, I think of it, I don't know, every couple, again, a week, once a week, twice, every two weeks, you know, as needed. You never want your coop to smell. If you catch even a whiff of ammonia, you really are going to want to clean everything out. I have vents up. Um, under the eaves that stay open year round. So there's good airflow. I have windows that actually open and shut. These stay open in the nice weather, close them in the winter, but you want to get good ventilation. Um, but there really is no need to completely clean out all the bedding constantly or even pick out all the poop. I just flip it with a rake. The poop falls to the, the ground, hardens, dries up, disintegrates. Boom, you're done. Um, what else can I mention? I guess that's about it as far as, as cleaning the coop. I mean, it, it honestly does not get that dirty um, because I'm not using the dusty shavings because my chickens are outside all day and because that's about it. <laughs> um, if you look closely, you know, that it's, it's not clean. Like if I was taking close-up photos, but I post pictures on Instagram all the time on Facebook of my coop. And it's funny because I'll post a picture, you know, like of this and people will be like, oh, just wait till the chickens move in. And I'm thinking my chickens have been living in here for six years. And I put the shiplap up probably at least three years ago, two or three years ago. Um, you know, the roosts have been here for a year and a half and they haven't been cleaned. <laughs> so, you know, it's easy to say that it looks clean, but I mean, you wouldn't actually want to live inside here yourself because it's, there's chicken poop, you know, it's a coop. Um, but there's no need for your coop to be disgusting and dirty and a health hazard for your chickens. But as long as there's fresh air, um, that that poop on the floor, it's not hurting anybody. Um, and it does dry up pretty quickly. Um, but you have, to, you have to use your nose and your eyes. And when you feel that it needs to be cleaned out, then clean it out. I do like raking it out into the run, especially during mud season. Our run does get pretty muddy. So the straw and now the hemp is going to help absorb some of that. It gives the chickens something to, you know, stand on and get out of the mud. Um, but don't, definitely don't overthink it. Don't kill yourself, you know, cleaning your coop. Um, just positioning the nesting boxes and the roosts correctly. The nesting boxes should hardly 
ever need to get cleaned. I mean, they just, they shouldn't get dirty other than muddy feet every once in a while. So anyway, um, I am going to be checking up throughout the afternoon to ask questions. I'm too far away now to read if there were any. Um, but if you have any questions, definitely ask them. I do have an article with details um, about my couple of points on how to keep your coop clean. And definitely don't be afraid to put up shiplap, to you know, paint the inside of your coop white. Um, oh, on that, I get asked a lot about what kind of paint to use. The shiplap came pre-painted from Home Depot, but if you're gonna paint the inside of your coop, like for the roosts and the nesting boxes, I used a chalk paint. You can use milk paint, you can use chalk paint, you can use any low VOC, you know, low fume paint that you might use in a baby's room. Um, so that way you don't worry about the chickens and obviously you wanna leave the windows open, you know, until the paint is completely dry. I leave the coop windows open as much as I possibly can. Uh, it's getting down into the mid thirties at night still, and I still have the windows cracked a little bit because you can never have too much fresh air in your coop. So I hope this has helped you and I've loved doing the series with Blue Seal. Um, be sure to check out your local Blue Seal store. They sell feed, but they sell a whole bunch of other stuff, not only for your chickens, but for your other animals too. Um, and check out the new small packs that they've come out with, the, the small uh, couple pound bags of feed that are also available, I believe on Amazon and Chewy. So anyway, Lisa Taylor from Fresh Eggs Daily and head over to fresheggsdaily.com with questions. And I will see you back again soon. I'm sure I'll be doing something else for Blue Seal uh, not too long from now.